on fusion, antimatter, and macro black holes and stars note, this is a compilation of my comments about the subject matter. Fusion does not always occur at extreme heat as conventional wisdom says. It has been demonstrated to occur in extreme cold as well, as in Eames Chinin Bose condensation, and probably it can occur in between those extremes of hot and cold as well, such as in cold fusion. In order to understand the many different types of fusion reactions, scientists need to determine what subatomic particles or atomic nuclei they are attempting to fuse together, at what energy levels or temperature pressure values those reactions take place, and what atomic byproducts and particle waves are being produced as a result. Actually, it is still the case that research into the many different possible atomic and subatomic reactions is a relatively new frontier being explored within the sciences. That research is just beginning to be applied to the various other physical sciences, such as geology and astronomy for instance as well as being implemented into new technological innovations such as power generation, advanced propulsion systems, plasma and cutting tools, teleportation, and, rather unfortunately, in weapon systems too. There is so much yet to be discovered about the physics of high energy collisions and subatomic particles that it still remains premature to discount new hypotheses in many other areas of scientific research. For instance, Contrary to conventional geological wisdom there might actually be fusion regularly occurring within the core of the Earth and in other planets, but scientists might simply be unaware of that given the present state of knowledge. There may even be fusion-generated superatoms that exist in the cores of the planets and the stars as a result of some combination of hydrostatic and electrostatic pressure buildups in between their fault lines and core layers similar to what occurs in Bussard's fuser. For instance, also of interest in particle physics and other physical sciences is the recently observed fact that lightning storms generate antimatter in our own atmosphere on a regular basis, and very likely occurs in lightning storms on Mars and in Jupiter, likely even on our own moon as well. Given this, it is probably no surprise at all if the sun is constantly generating its own lightning and matter and to matter annihilation reactions in the corona as well. According to the traditional model of the sun, fusion occurs at some depths as a result of hydrostatic and electrostatic pressures, and it is not such a surprise that hydrogen fusion occurs in the hot coronal arcs as well. More specifically, I hypothesize that the internal less energetic nuclear fusion reactions of the denser atomic elements occur due to significant hydrostatic pressures from gravitation providing the activation energy which thereby generates the great ionic arcs of the outer corona which are bent back toward the sun by the great magnetic fields there are much more energetic fusion reactions that occur within those gigantic arcing coronal bolts of lightning and also antimatter is constantly being generated and annihilated there as well. That hypothesis suffices to explain why the sun is much hotter at the corona than below the surface and down in the core, which may be composed of dense molten metals, perhaps dense fissionable metals similar to what is believed to be in Earth's core, and possibly even denser superatoms are found there as well. Of particular interest about the sun is the magnetic solar cycle and the periodic formation of sunspots and subsequent release of coronal mass ejections and solar flares. Not much is very well understood with the conventional theories. However perhaps there is a phenomenon in high energy particle physics that can better explain what is happening. During the solar cycle, the sun acts as a giant RLC circuit, an inductor against the capacitance of the vacuum of space. The greatest time rate of change of the sun's magnetic field, when the magnetic field is inverting its polarity which occurs every 11 years, occurs at the solar maximum which is when there is a maximum of sunspots being observed. I hypothesize that when the magnetic field is changing most rapidly it causes particles to begin colliding with each other at tremendous energies, with far greater energy than the Large Hadron Collider produces and that causes thick clouds of micro black holes to form, and thus creating sunspots that block out large portions of the sun. As those sunspot micro black holes decay via Hawking cavitation, 
each hole randomly popping with huge energies, that creates the coronal mass ejections that are associated with sunspots, and thereby supplying the ionic conduit which Birkeland currents can thereby travel through. Those micro black holes in the sunspots might in fact be launching the particles and photons they consume through time itself and thereby reappearing in the corona as solar flares or Birkeland currents at other points in time. It shouldn't be any surprise if it is found out that all stars, in acting like oscillating LHC circuits against the capacitance of space, experience periodic star spots at their stellar minimums and maximums as well. This probably occurs at a wide range of frequencies varying greatly from our own sun's 11-year cycles that we're familiar with, and likely occurs within stars of all different masses and sizes from massive supergiants down to magnetars and pulsars and even at the event horizon boundaries of supermassive black holes in the centers of the galaxies as well.